so that'll be a whole bunch of parts for the Hope Light 7 degree of freedom arm which you can see right here being modelled in the CAD that's the computer aided design program SOLIDWORKS typically what I release are the SDL files and also parasolids which are the finished shapes STL files are suitable for 3D printing and parasolids are suitable for importing into other CAD programs here you can see the elbow flexing then up here this is the heavy pitch joint at the back of which is a large bearing coming round to the side this is the yaw action, as in raising the arm to the side of the body. So the shoulder has four degrees of freedom in total. The pitch, the yaw, the roll, and the elbow. Well, I guess that's the shoulder and the upper arm. The shoulder itself has three, and the elbow is the fourth. If you add three more for the wrist, that gives you the seven degrees of freedom in total. This is a maybe not a derivation, but this is what has come after designing the SO arm for hugging face. The SO arm is really designed to be as simple as possible. This arm is designed to be considerably high performance, better looking. It uses additional components, um, but that makes the printing harder and the logistics of building it harder. A major difference with this arm is the pulley system, which allows a hybrid tendon to run over the top of the shoulder and down into the elbow. It uses Bowden cables to bypass having an effect on both the yaw and the roll at the shoulder. And with a single tendon gives much higher forces for pitch and bicep flexion, as in the action of lifting a dumbbell. So the first test I'm planning to do with this arm, in fact, is a maximum exertion test with the tendon going all the way down to the fingertips and up to 640 pounds of force can be run through eight strands of tendon. So that's the test I'll do. Once the parts have been designed, they get turned into an STL file, which is suitable for 3D printing. Here you can see the slicer in my old printer, which is an up box. And this is the up slicer, which comes with the printer itself and it's going to work out what's called the g-code and that is a set of instructions which tells the tip of the printing head where to go and as it goes it squirts out plastic also with instructions to finesse all of that and really almost as if by magic at the end of that process out pops a finished working part this is what it looks like when it's going into the machine i am laying down a raft here because I don't have a glass bottom printer. And the next morning, there it is. Ta da! Amazes me every time. So, if you want to build this arm, I will release these prints. These prints will definitely have quite a lot of errors in them. This is not a release draft. This is the first draft which is printable. And the aim of that draft is that there are no mistakes so large that an assembly can't be completed just by using hand corrections. And that could be soldering irons, saws, drills, knives, scalpels, sanding, filing, all of the kind of subtractive methods that you would associate with normal engineering. The aim is to end up with a set of prints which you just print and remove the supports and then that's it, they're completely finished. Actually getting in there, it's gonna take many iterations, but this is the first attempt.